if, if we switch gears a little bit to somebody who is a little earlier in the Russell Wilson phase of the, their career and, and that of Brock Purdy, and this is an area that I know I have been asked to talk about on the podcast by many people. Well, what do you think about Brock Purdy? Is Brock Purdy the next Tom Brady? You're hearing a lot of those comparisons too, by the way. Brock Purdy's the next Tom Brady, and and I get it. Late round draft pick. Now, Mister Irrelevant's a whole different thing than you know sixth rounder, but um, late round draft pick uh, didn't expect to come in and play. Came in and played because of injury. Took advantage of the opportunity. Won a lot of games. Uh, Brock Purdy doesn't have a Super Bowl yet, I don't think. So maybe we pump the brakes a little bit there. Uh, but if you look at Brock Purdy's statistics on a you know just a an even money basis he is leading the league in a lot of good categories he is playing the position very well um you know he looks good on qbr he looks good on rating he looks good on sort of passing yards even top top 10 in passing yeah. yards top 10 in passing touchdowns and so yards per attempt is i high. want to be really clear like i'm not yeah i'm not going to crap on his game but this comes back to this whole conversation of how teams think about quarterbacks, how the media thinks about quarterbacks, how fans think about quarterbacks. He has not done anything yet in his career to distinguish himself from other quarterbacks who started strong. And contrary, excuse me, contrary to popular belief, quarterbacks that start strong are not necessarily quarterbacks who finish strong. I mean, there is a series of guys out there, and and Carson Wentz is my favorite. When Carson Wentz came out, he was going to be the next thing. You had Carson Wentz, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson, there were a couple other people who were kind of coming out around the same time. Everybody was like, oh, these are the next guys. Lamar has been able to sustain it. Most of the others have not. Um, and and there are others, you know, kind of in that bucket. And And I'm not saying whether he's Dak Prescott or Carson Wentz or Tom Brady, or that any of those is a bad outcome. But the fact that people are already piling into this kid as if he's the second coming of Tom Brady, what, I mean, he's 12, 15 games into his career? Yeah, and, 15 and, regular and season about games and two playoff games. Yeah, so think about it this way. You've got Brock Purdy, who, if he comes on and has a Dak Prescott career, by all measures, that's a successful NFL career. Well, you knocked you down the park play, relative to where he was drafted, right? A hundred percent. You've played well. You get your second contract. You come in. You win your, some games for your team. You win a couple of playoff games. You know, do you get to the promised land? Maybe, maybe not. But that's a win for that kid. But now, no, no. If he doesn't go win seven Super Bowls, he's a disappointment. He won his first the game i forget i don't know the numbers i don't care his first however many games then he goes on a three game losing streak and everybody's like oh, i don't know i don't know brock purdy not very good you you want me to go through the list of quarterbacks who have had three game losing streaks and not played well there's a Every long quarterback ever. list of really good quarterbacks who have the, so we're on this roller coaster with 24 hour news cycle whether we're whatever it is where we want to crown the guy right now right now is he, what is he? What is he right now? Tell me his career is going to look like 25 years from now. Right now, tell me now. And it, it does a disservice to the team, does a disservice to the quarterback, the players. Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, the Shanahan coaching tree, puts their quarterbacks in positions to succeed. Period. End of story. And I know you're going to tell us more about that, Luke, so I'll leave it at a high level. But Brock Purdy is the benefit of more blown coverages than any quarterback in the league. And that's not because the defenses he's playing are worse. It's because the offensive system he has always gets a guy open. And listen, Brock Purdy's finding that guy. And that's a huge talent um, as, as a coach of kids who play football. I, we can often scheme a guy open, right? The kids are playing defense too. And so it's pretty easy to get a guy open because you can confuse the defense. But your quarterback's got to find the guy who gets open. And I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of kids who can't do that. Now, I'm coaching nine year olds. So, you know, you would expect the, the, the pros can do it a little bit better. But Brock Purdy's done an one, excellent job He's a of finding the open receivers. And you don't see that with every quarterback. So, I, taking nothing away from the guy, but he's been put in the best possible situation 
why don't we slow roll it a little bit more? Why don't we say, man, he's playing well, really proud of that kid coming out of college, not a heralded name, got slotted in behind a guy who they paid three first round draft picks for, was on this huge num- you know, top three pick. What are we going to do? Maybe I'll make the team. Maybe I won't make the team. I'm looking for an opportunity to play somewhere else and ends up being the starting quarterback. That's a great story. Why can't we leave that the story rather than trying to christen the next? If he becomes the next Tom Brady, wins seven Super Bowls, let's applaud that too. But let's not put that as the expectation on the kid going into year one, year two. So that's my take, Luke. I don't know what you had. No, I think that's 100% right. And I think one thing that we didn't mention with with Wilson and, and the other, and they're kind of talking about the coverage, which I think is especially true of Brock Purdy, is it's it's obviously it's all quarterback coverage is overblown, as we have said. But it, the other problem is if you criticize someone, or even not criticize, but just don't sing them to high heaven, right? You're preying on his downfall, or you're a hater, or whatever these like you know social media age terms are about. Oh, uh, you know, you you think the guy sucks because you don't think he's the best quarterback since you know Joe Montana. Brock Purdy has been playing phenomenally well if you consider his journey to where he is it's unparalleled what he's doing genuinely it's unparalleled what he's doing as at this early in his career tom brady wasn't doing this when he was coming as a sixth round pick right he was managing the game don't make any mistakes and hand it off 50 times a game but the point with brock purdy is if you don't say this just he, in luke a- grundy says brock purdy is better than tom brady <laughs> he's much better and he always will be and that's the end of the story no the point is like <laughs> I, I was actually racking my brains to think if there is, I'm not, this isn't exaggeration. Is there ever been a comparable situation for a quarterback to come into ever? No, I don't, I couldn't think of one. You've got the best defense in the league. You've got a hall of fame left tackle. You've got a hall of fame tight end. You've got a hall of fame running back and you've got two all pro level wide receivers and the one of the best offensive minds in football today at once and all of those guys are in their primes i mean trent williams getting older but you've got all these guys at the exact point in their careers that they're going to be at their best that isn't to say it's easy to do this so go on yeah you want to say something closest closest might be patrick mahomes and you think about the situation he came into in kansas city yeah with an excellent offensive line an excellent coach couple of wide receivers that were legitimate the defense wasn't wasn't what they have in san francisco right now but a very good defense right. but you think like realistically that might be the closest comparison right and, and even you then know, obviously both did something with it yeah and even but even patrick Mahomes didn't have christian mccaffrey and trent williams and deep like it is a death star of offensive talent which we just haven't really seen all to be at the perfect point in their careers it's it's incredible what they've assembled credit to john lynch and, and, the, the, and the guys who do the evaluation there and the trade for mccaffrey has completely transformed this team he throws to guys who are on average, the second most open in the league. Ahead of him is Lamar. Behind him is Jalen Hurts. That makes sense because Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson run around all the time. So you have to keep guys into spy. Brock Purdy's not going to beat you with his legs. So it does make sense. But the scheme is amazing. And just one thing to say before we get into kind of some of the statistics is people always wonder, like, how do you account for, like, how good the scheme is versus how good the guy is? Now, your point is exactly right. Throwing it to an open player is not as easy as it seems. And he's done brilliantly. Process it quick. Hit, hit the receiver in stride. He's accurate in the short and intermediate range. Doesn't have the strong arm, but he's, you know, throws with enough anticipation, get it out there, give the guy a chance. He's done all that great. But you look how often he hits his back foot and throws it. It's a lot. And that's because the read is open. The reason the read is open is that the defense is not ready for it because the offense is well-designed. If you see a quarterback who looks as in rhythm as he does, it's only because, it's only because the scheme is good enough. It's the only reason. Because you see Mahomes drop back. Mahomes has got all the talent on earth. You see him drop back, hit his back foot and go, I can't throw it, no one's open, all the time. Brock Purdy, a lot of the time, goes hit the back foot throw, hit the back foot throw, hit the back foot throw. Now, being decisive is hard. Throwing it to the guy is hard. But if you're watching a TV copy and you're wondering how to kind of think about it, it's an easy kind of quick way to make that assessment, right? A lot of the time, it's because the first read is going to be open and he's throwing it to the first read, which is great. Doesn't mean... He's going to be a Hall of Famer. But again, this doesn't mean we're crapping on Brock Purdy. It's just like that's the reality of the situation he's in and he's maximizing it. Um, What I thought would be interesting to kind of account for this is to look at the Kyle Shanahan effect. You mentioned it, right? Kyle Shanahan making guys look great is a thing, right? It's a thing. And the comparisons that get drawn for Brock Purdy, the most common one is Jimmy Garoppolo, right? 
So when the Niners made the Super Bowl, Jimmy Garoppolo was the quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo in 2019, I'll just read you the stat line here. 3,900 yards, 27 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 69% completion percentage, 8.4 yards per attempt. Pretty good. Uh, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is not that good. I don't know if that's news to you, Tim. He's never shown anything like that anywhere else. Phenomenal. He's had two years where he started. He got injured in the middle, but the two years he started with Kyle Shanahan, he was 8.4 yards per attempt, 8.6. Like that's, that's high, especially for a guy who's not, you know, launching it. He's not Russell Wilson, right? Jimmy G can't throw it deep that well. Now the leading players on that team, the kind of key pieces, the rush, the rushing attack was three headed. It was Raheem Mostert. It was Matt Breida, Tevin Coleman. Kittle was there and you had Debo who was a rookie. So you had some talent, but not equivalent to what Purdy has got. The second example I wanted to give is at a higher level, but I kind of think has a little bit lost in the shuffle, which is when Matt Ryan was with the Falcons and Carl Shanahan was the offensive coordinator. Matt Ryan had a very good career. Matt Ryan had one year in which he looked like the best quarterback in the history of time when he won the MVP and they went to the Super Bowl and blew the 28-3 lead. Career high in yards, career high in touchdowns, career high in completion percentage, 70%, 70%. Career high in yards per attempt, career low in picks. And he did it on only 534 passes, which is the third lowest total of his entire career when he played all 16 games. One of those seasons is his rookie year. So does this sound familiar? Fewer passes, higher success rate, yards per attempt, super high. This is a guy who played a long time in the league and his career year was under this offense. Now they had Julio Jones. That'll help. But the other players on this team, Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman at running back. So good rushing attack again, but not Christian McCaffrey, but good rushing attack. The next two receivers leading were Mohamed Sanu, who was fine. Taylor Gabriel, who was just a guy. And Matt Ryan put up these (laughs) absurd statistics and led the team to the brink of a Super Bowl championship with Kyle Shanahan. Now, Brock Purdy last year, 67% completion percentage. 13 touchdowns, four interceptions, 8.1 yards per attempt, only threw 170 passes and threw for 1,374 yards in the regular season. All I'm saying is, does this sound familiar? Does any of that yes, sound sir, it does. You know, common across different quarterbacks? Now, of those three, talent-wise, you know, Matt Ryan went third overall and was a very talented collegiate quarterback. Jimmy G was good. And Brock Purdy was the last pick in the draft. So on talent maximization, you have to say Brock Purdy's outperformed versus the other two guys. But all I'm saying is bringing it back to what we said originally. It matters. This stuff matters. And you do have to look below the surface level of wins, of just the raw box scores to get a grasp on it. Look or listen back to the statistics I just read out. I'm not going to read them again because it'll take forever. There is a serious common thread between these three players all of whom have similar physical profiles in terms of they're not going to run for a lot of yards. It's a system which generates high reward and high result. Brock Purdy making the most of that is not saying Brock Purdy sucks. But saying Brock Purdy has the by far the most around him of any of those three players is also fair. So he had a perfect passer rating last weekend. He had a game earlier this year where he was almost 100% completions, I think, or he was 100% completions, I want to say. It's fun. It's phenomenal. Like, it is phenomenal. You do handicap it a bit because of what he's got around him, and it's obvious that Kyle Shanahan makes quarterbacks better. That is just a fact. Now, if Brock Purdy goes on to become the best quarterback in the history of football, I will be the first one clapping him into Canton. The story's incredible. What he's done is fantastic. How he's playing is amazing. However, to your point, let's not put the kid under this 15-year guaranteed Super Bowl window crap when the one game he's played this year without the entire Avengers around him, right, when Debo was injured, Trent Williams was either injured, missed a game, or didn't play at 100%. They lost all three games. They scored 17 points per game, and he threw five interceptions. That doesn't mean he's bad either, but it's reality. So that's no, my I think treatise that's right, on Brock Purdy. 